Good morning, Anchor. We're so glad that you're able to join us for this week's worship. Um, I just hope that you had a really great week and we're able to um, just enjoy the lack of burning hot sunshine this week and some really nice wind. Um, so we're just going to start off our time with a word of prayer. If you'll bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. Thank you that your mercies are new every single morning and that you are a good God who is always watching out for what's best for us, God. We pray that we would continue to surrender everything that we have, everything that we are, Lord, um, to continue to give it up to you and to continue to live our lives for you, knowing that you are a good God. So we pray that we'd be able to um, just come here and focus to be able to sing your praises, Lord, to be able to learn more about you and to draw closer to um, to our community and just to everything that you have for us, Lord. So we give you this time, and in your name, amen. our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name. everyone and welcome to Anchor Community Church. My name is Ben and as always our purpose statement here at Anchor is to make gospel-centered disciples in community on mission to the glory of God. So I just have a few announcements that I want to mention today. Uh, the first thing is summer college group. So 
Our summer college group has just begun. They're going to be meeting every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and um, join the Facebook group. It's called 2020 Anchor College Summer Group. Uh, and you can go ahead and let Eric Quinn know if you have any questions about that. Uh, next, we have prayer meeting this Saturday. So uh, our monthly prayer meeting is going to be this Saturday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Um, and the Zoom link will be on the events page of our website. Uh, next, we have our appreciation Zoom party for Ivan and Danica. Uh, so we're going to have a party for Ivan and Danica on Zoom, and that's going to be happening next Sunday night, uh, June 28th at 7 p.m. So we encourage you to write uh, a message or record a video of anything you'd like to say to them before they leave. Um, these videos will be played at the party, um, and if you do record something, go ahead and send that to Jeremy Zhao. Um, you can send letters and photos to Emmeline Quinn by tomorrow, um, June 22nd. Uh, we also invite you to eat noodles during the meeting in honor of Danica's favorite food. Uh, and again, the Zoom link and the details for that will be provided on the events page of our website. Um, as always, if you have any prayer requests or if you would like to join one of our online groups, go ahead and fill out the prayer request link online. And if you would like to give, please go to our giving page on our website. Um, if you're a regular attender, we encourage you to give as you're able to. Um, if you're new here, please don't feel any pressure to give. Uh, so we do have one more special announcement, and for that, I'm going to hand it over to Eric Quinn. Hey everyone, this is Eric, and I miss all of you so much. I wanted to take this time to congratulate and recognize all those who recently graduated and are in the process of transitioning. It's been a tough and strange three months, and I can't imagine how hard it's been to have to walk through some of these huge accomplishments and transitions without all your friends and family to celebrate and be with you. So right now, we would like to take this time to recognize all of you and the hard work you've, been, you've put in during these past few years. It's never a small thing to enter a new stage of life, and we hope we can continue to walk with you. And even if we can't and God is leading you to a different place, we know that we will continue to be united through Jesus. So here are the people we are celebrating today. We're gonna to start off with those who are getting, who just got their master's degree. And the first is from Fuller Seminary, Ivan Wong. Next we have from Cal Poly Slow, Jody Yu. From UC Davis, we have Andrew Tren. And from Cal State Fullerton, we have Katrina Wong. Moving on to our undergrads, from UC San Diego, we have Ethan Fan and Anita Tren. From UPenn, we have Aliyah Chen and Felicia Chen. From Biola, we have Jordan Davis, Jeremy Zhao, Emmett Lee, Justin Tan, and Grace Wu. From Cal State Fullerton, we have Kylie Chang. From UCLA, we have Jonathan Huang and Zachary Prong. From UC Riverside, we have Sydney Lam, Patrick Lau, and Justin Yan. From USC, we have Chris Lam. And from UC Irvine, we have Vivian Chung and Bobby Ye. I would like to take this, take a moment to pray for all these people. So please join me in praying for them. Father God, Lord, we just come before you and we thank you for all these individuals and what you've been doing in their lives and the calling that you've placed on them, Lord. God, we thank you that you brought them to this church, whether it's for that period or continuing forward, Father God, it was such a a great thing, God, that we could fellowship together, that we could do life together, that we could learn to be more like you together, God. And we just want to pray and send off all these no longer students, um, but just all these people, Father God, all these individuals into this world, God. And we pray that you would use them in whatever field they're entering. We pray that they would be a light wherever they're going, God. We ask that you would strengthen them in those times of weakness. We know that transitioning is never easy. And especially during this time, Father God, where there's so many unknowns moving forward, 
just about just coronavirus and everything going on in the world. And we ask that you would just continue to equip these people with your word. God, continue to strengthen them. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for these individuals, God, and what you've been doing in their lives. We pray that you would be glorified going forward. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So good morning. Uh, welcome again to Anchor Community Church. My name is Pastor Ben. Uh, I just want to wish um, all the fathers out there a uh, happy Father's Day. Um, hopefully you got the gift that uh, we delivered uh, to you. Um, you know, also, you know, once again, congratulations to all of the college grads, grad school grads. Uh, we are so happy for you um, and we really pray for you um, as you graduate onto this uh, next stage of life. Um, I also just want to, um, you know, once again, encourage you to come to our virtual prayer meeting next Saturday. Um, you know, a lot of stuff, uh, there's a lot of stuff to pray for in our world. Um, you know, we need to pray for uh, racial injustice. It's been so heavy on our hearts. We need to pray for the coronavirus. We need to pray for our church. Um, you know, prayer, it's, you know, it's, it doesn't, that's not the only thing that we can do, but it's what we have to start with. So I just want to encourage you uh, to come and, and pray uh, for the world and for ourselves um, next Saturday. So um, today we're going to wrap up our sermon series um, on Hebrews 11. And we've been looking at you know, all these different stories and examples of faith. And today, uh, I think this passage, you know, wraps it up real nicely. And um, with this note, right? Simple note. And that is, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You know, I think we all need encouragement these days, right? I mean, it's, it's a good thing. We've also been talking about how it's important to be realistic, to be honest, to lament, and to grieve. But, you know, I think it's also important to be encouraged. To be encouraged by God. Um, and I think that's what he wants us to hear today in this passage. Um, so let's... Let's try to be encouraged today. Let's let's look at um, Hebrews um, eleven thirty nine, and we're going to read all the way to chapter twelve, verse two. Okay, so starting with Hebrews eleven thirty nine. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I pray with me one more time. God, Lord, we thank you, God, for bringing us through this week, whatever it was like for us, God. And God, now we just want to um, sit at the feet of your word and hear your voice and to be encouraged. So, Lord, I pray that you would do that this morning. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first, all we see here is that we can be encouraged by those who went before us. 
okay, by those who went before us. Look at verse 39. It says, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Okay, so this is, you know, just, you know, looking back at the last 38 verses, all those stories, all those examples, all these men and women in the Old Testament who went before us, and they were examples of faith. Okay, they, it says that they, they had faith even though they did not receive what was promised. Okay, you know, just, you know, recap a little bit. You know, remember Abraham. Okay, remember Abraham who received the promise from God that there would be a great nation that comes from him and they would, you know, live in this, in the promised land. He never saw that. Right? I mean, the fulfillment of that promise uh, of the promised land didn't happen until 400 years later. Yet he still put his trust in God and his promises. Right? Remember Noah, right? Who feared God and put his trust in him. Remember Moses, who left a life of luxury and privilege to follow God's calling. Remember Rahab the prostitute who trusted God and God used her. I remember all the prophets who suffered and died, right? To trust in God and put their faith in Him. You know, verse, you, a couple of verses later in chapter 12, verse 1, um, the author of Hebrews puts it like this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, right? So all these people, all these stories, you know, kind of imagine them. They're, they're like this big cloud, right, of people who lived by faith, right? I mean, you can even picture all their faces, standing next to each other, you know, picture, as you read those stories, picture what it was like to be, uh, walk in their shoes, right? This all, this great cloud of witnesses, it's not just one or two people, it's this great cloud, their lives, right? They should speak to us today, right? And I think what their lives say to us is you are not alone, right? When, when you live the Christian life and you're discouraged or you're confused like Abraham was or, you know, when you're tempted, when, you're, when you suffer, you are not alone. They did it too. They were discouraged. They suffered. What you are experiencing in the difficulties of your life, it's not abnormal. This is what all the saints in the Bible walked through. You know, once again, remember, right? If your impression when you read these stories is like, oh yeah, these people are just these perfect, shiny heroes. No, no. Right? Go, go back and read the, all the details of their lives. They were so far from perfect. They made so many mistakes. There were so many moments when they did not have faith. Right? They failed again and again. But look, they repented. Most of them. Right? They, they remembered God and his promises. Right? And, they, and they continually put their trust in God. And you can too. You know, so when you read the Bible, you're, whenever you read the Bible, you're surrounded by this cloud of witnesses. You know, but I think all of us also are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses of, of people that we've personally seen in our lives who have modeled what it looks like to live by faith. Right? And who, who are those people for you? 
Um, you know, for me, I, there's a lot of people, but a couple of people that come to my mind, first one's my dad. Uh, it's fitting on Father's Day, right? But, you know, one thing I remember about my dad is that, you know, almost every day when he came home from work around like 5, 5.30, maybe later, he would always go to his office and read the Bible and pray. Yeah, I remember as a kid, I would like be looking for my dad. I'd be, you know, going, I need to get something out of that room. And I'd always see him at his desk, reading the Bible after a long day, praying. You know, in that way, he modeled what it looks like to really live by faith. You know, reminding himself of God's word. You know, there, another example for me was um, the pastor who baptized me when I was in high school. You know, I grew up going to this Chinese church, and he was the the Chinese pastor. He's a senior pastor. He was this immigrant from Taiwan. His English was broken. But I always remember him um, just, you know, always being so friendly to me and my friends, even though his English wasn't perfect. And he would always be joking around with us. He would play basketball with us. And, you know, I just knew from looking at him as a kid that this was a faithful man servant of God right I didn't always understand what was going on in church but you know I knew that there are there are some difficulties and challenges and I remember he just he would be so faithful he would walk through those challenges he would always have integrity he would faithfully preach the word of God you know and it's pretty cool because you know that was in Chicago but you know I ended up in California and so did he and, you know, I had the great privilege and honor um, that he was actually able to attend my ordination when I was ordained here in California. And, and I remember seeing him and he had that same smile, but he, his hair was a lot more gray. You know, he actually invited me to speak at his church out here in California. And that was, you know, it's such a great honor and privilege. You know, but when I, when I look at him now as this, you know, older man, I know that he was a man who endured and was faithful. Who, who are your, who, who's in your cloud of witnesses? Who are those faithful men and women who model for you what it looks like to really live by faith? over the long haul, right? Remember them when you struggle, right? Imitate them, be encouraged by them, okay? Secondly, be encouraged to run the race. Um, look at, uh, Chapter 12, verse 1 again, it says, <clears throat> Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, so the image that we see here is the image of a race. Okay, so, you know, in that time and culture, it was the Greek, um, the Greek games that they would think of, right? And these are the, the great Greek uh, athletic games which the Olympics now are based off of, okay? And one of the main events of the great Greek ga games was a foot race, right? And, you know, notice it says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, okay? So the image is not a sprint. The image is more like a marathon. That's the race that we have set before us, this long marathon, right? And, you know, think about marathon runners, 
okay, what they have to do. I mean, they, every day for years and years and years, you got to train for that marathon. You got to you got to be, be running these long distances um, every day. So you're training your body for endurance. You're, you're training your stamina. You're building those muscles, right? Um, and you know they're they're doing all this as they as they train to run that marathon. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, what's the difference between s- s- sprinters and marathon runners? Okay, the sprinters, they're the ones who get all the attention, right? The ones who run like you know the, the short races, their their bodies, their, their muscles are really big. <laughs> right and it's very noticeable they're so muscular right and also they they get all the glory all the attention they, they're on the wheaties boxes not the marathon runners right they get all the, because why because that short race it's so exciting right you know they get all the the glory but the marathon runners they're like in the you know in the background no one they don't get any glory Look, the Christian life, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, right? It's, it's not like just running really hard for 10 seconds and then, you know, flaming out and then giving up. It's running a marathon. It's developing uh, habits in our life, right? Training ourselves for the long run right it's you know the the ones who live by faith are not those who get all the attention who get the most likes on social media it's those who live faithfully who sometimes don't get any credit it's those who walk consistently and humbly over the long haul So, you know, to, to, to run the marathon, man, you got you to gotta develop habits, right? Not just moments based on spiritual highs. You got to develop the habits of grace, right? You have to commit to practices like reading the Bible and praying and solitude that form you over the long haul, right? You have to commit to community, Right, and people around you, even though sometimes they'll make you uncomfortable and sometimes you'll have conflict, but you don't run away and give up because of conflict. You gotta commit to that and that's how you run the race over the long haul. You know, notice it says that here that we should lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Okay, the image, once again, is of the runner, right? The runner who, you know, ordinarily, you know, you might wear like all these clothes, you know, heavy clothes, but when he is running the race, he takes off those heavy clothes and exchanges them for lightweight running shorts, right? He, he takes off those things that hinder him and distract him and, and weigh him down. You know, I love how it also acknowledges that this is not an easy task, right? It says, lay aside the weight and the sin which clings so closely, right? As we run the race, our sin, the temptations, the pull, the weight of our idols, the lies that call out to us, they're, they're, they're trying to drag us away from the race and they cling so closely, right? You know, in the book of Ephesians and Colossians, um, the Apostle Paul also uses that same imagery of, of clothing and, and he uses it to symbolize our old self, right? Our identity before we met Jesus, right? The way of life apart from Jesus that's enslaved to sin. And in Ephesians 4.22, he says, put off 
your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Right? And he says, put off. That, I mean, that's a, that's a term you use for a piece of clothing. Right? You know, I, you know whenever I, th I think about the old self, you know, the image I get is like this, this old, nasty hoodie. Right? That you used, you used to be your favorite hoodie, but it's just disgusting. Right? And when you wear it, it's got all these stains on it. And, it, you know, it's, it looks gross. And it's, it is gross. You got all these flies buzzing around you because you got this gross food stains on it. Right? And your friends are like, dude, why do you wear that thing? It's disgusting. Take that thing off. Right? And, you know, actually, you know it, right? You're, you're like constantly complaining about it. You're like, oh, I hate these flies. This thing is, you know, it looks bad, but you never take it off. Keep, you keep living in it, right? Listen, it's not enough to talk about your sin. It's not even enough to confess your sin. I mean, that's where you start, right? You have to take action. You have to cut off those temptations if you really want to stop those behaviors. Right? So, you know, laying aside those weights, right? Putting off the old self, it, it means not just avoiding sinful behaviors, but you got to ask yourself, what are the things in my life Right? The patterns, the habits that are actually feeding my sinful desires. And what do I have to do to cut off those things in my life which are feeding my sinful desires? Okay, for some of you, that means you got to think about fasting from social media for maybe a few days in the weeks or some hours in the day. You got to. You got to stop looking at that, right? For some of you, it means maybe you need to install that accountability software on your devices. Uh, for some of you, you may need to really start to exercise more and develop a healthier lifestyle. You know, maybe some of us, you really need to use a calendar, set a schedule for your day. Running the race means laying aside those things that are weighing you down, that are distracting you, right? It means fighting your sin actively. So be encouraged to run the race. And lastly, and most importantly, be encouraged by looking to Jesus. Look at uh, verse 2, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So, look, yeah, you should be encouraged by the Old Testament examples and all the people that you read about in the Bible. And you should be encouraged by those real-life examples in your life, right? But above all, you should look at Jesus, right? Look and meditate on what he did, okay? Uh, it says here, what, what does it say? We should look, look to. It says, Jesus, look to Jesus who went to the cross despising the shame of the cross, I remember the cross, it, it was never this noble symbol that we see today of, you know, like, of peace, you know. No, the cross was a symbol of torture and public humiliation reserved for the worst criminals. Jesus went to the cross and he endured it endured it for you and me.
because of our sin. Right? When we suffer, when we are weak, look at Jesus. Look at what he did. He suffered too. Right? And he knows what it feels like to suffer. Right? And he walks with you because he knows. Jesus is an example for us in our suffering. He is a model for us in his suffering. Okay, but I also want you to notice another thing in this passage. You can go back to uh, verse 40 in chapter 11. And there was, you know, it's talking, wrapping up, talking about all the Old Testament examples of faith. And then, but then it says in verse 40, God has provided something better for us that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. All right, what's, what's the something better that we have that they don't have? Well, look, the Old Testament states, they, they put their faith in God and his promises to save them. But we have something better than they had. We have seen Jesus. Jesus who fulfilled all of those promises that God made in the Old Testament. And we have Jesus now who makes us perfect. You know, several times in Hebrews, you know, especially in verse uh, chapter 9 and 10, Hebrews talks about how, you know, in the Old Testament they had to make sacrifices in the temple and they had to, you know, they had the priests, right? And, and it says a few places that these were temporary practices that could never make them perfect. Right? The blood of those, those sacrifices could never make them perfect. But in chapter 10, verse 14, Hebrews, it says, But now we have Jesus, and his blood cleanses us. And it says there, By a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Okay, let's look at that verse again. What does it say? It says, In Jesus we have been perfected for all time. You have been made perfect in Jesus. Right? The blood of Jesus covers all of your sin, past, present, in future, Romans 8, 1, in Christ there is now no condemnation. Okay, now listen carefully, all right? You are made perfect in Christ, but that doesn't mean that you behave perfectly. Okay, or that you no longer sin. But what it means is that in Christ you are forgiven. And not only are you forgiven, you have a new identity. Right? You have the promises fulfilled in Christ. You are a perfectly loved, accepted child of God. Right? So if you go back to that analogy of the, you know, the, the old self being this nasty, stinky hoodie, right? You know, Ephesians 4, that says put off the old self, goes on to say, verse 24, Ephesians 4, 24, put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. All right, so if the old self is like this nasty hoodie. The new self is kind of like this brand new sweater. Right, the most comfortable sweater you have ever worn or felt. And it's the most beautiful sweater. It looks perfect on you. Right, that's the new self. And once again, you don't just talk about the new self. You don't just talk about that new sweater. Oh man, that sweater is awesome, right? It's the best and you just leave it in your bedroom, in your closet. 
No, you gotta, you gotta put it on. You gotta live in it, right? Listen to the promises of God that are yours in Jesus, right? You need to listen to them and live in the truth of them. That's what it means to put on the new self. That's what it means to be made perfect, right? And, and you know, I'm just going to read some promises from the book of Ephesians. Right? I'm, I'm just going to read them out to you. And I want you just to listen. Listen to these promises that are true if you have trusted in Jesus. And just listen. You are chosen by God in Christ. You are adopted as his child. You are redeemed through his blood. You are forgiven of your trespasses. You are raised with Christ. You are seated with him in the heavenly places. Friends, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. You are not alone. Jesus walks with you. He walks ahead of you, before you. And he has made you a new creation. Let's look to him and run the race. Let's pray. God, Lord, we... Uh, God, would you encourage us right now in this moment as we listen. I know that there are many of us here who really just need to be encouraged. God, encourage us. Help us to know, help us to listen to all these stories of these saints who also suffered and had it difficult and they, they walked with you, Lord. Help us to look to you and your example. Help us to remember our new identity in you. We have these promises. God, help us to keep our eyes focused on you and help us to run that long, long race. Jesus, help us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So we're going to sing that again, except for this time we're going to sing, May Our Struggles Keep Us Near the Cross. We just want you guys to ch continue to be encouraged that, that this race that we're running, it's not alone. That you can look to your left, you can look to your right. There's brothers and sisters alongside of you. And that we as a church body, um, whether that's just an anchor or just the, the universal church body, we are all running this race together, um, trying to keep strong, trying to press on even when we struggle even when things feel just really difficult, that we just continue to look to the cross and know that God is good and that each struggle that we go through is another thing that's just proving how good God is in our lives and how faithful he is. So let's sing this together. May our struggles. May our struggles keep us near the cross. May our troubles show that we need God. May our battles end the way they should. May our bad days prove that God is good. May our struggles. Father, we praise you for being so faithful, Lord, for proving yourself over and over again, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. Thank you that we are not alone in life. Thank you that even if we don't feel the physical presence of others around us, Lord, that you reside right in our hearts, God, that you're here with us every single step of the way. You are holding all of our struggles and all of our triumphs in your hand. Lord, we pray that we would just continue to cling to you, to cling to the cross. And in your name, amen.